So this is chapter P, section P.1, which is about real numbers. So you can see the things that you're learning representing real numbers, order and interval notation, basic properties of algebra, integer exponent scientific notation. And so these are all things that you'll use throughout the other chapter. So it's just kind of a recap. These are all things you've learned before. So the first thing is real numbers. So I included this little graphic. There's some things um, that I included in the notes as well. So a real number is basically anything that's not imaginary. So we've talked about in Algebra 2, we talked about complex numbers, so things that have I in it. Um, those are imaginary numbers, not real. So everything else falls under the category of real numbers. Underneath the big subset of real numbers, we have rational numbers and irrational. So you can see over here, rational numbers can be written as a fraction or as a repeating or terminating decimal. So um, in the notes, we have like a terminating decimal would be if I have 7 divided by 4, I have 1.75. So that's a terminating decimal because it stops. Okay, and then repeating decimals, so say I have 4 elevenths, that would be, if I put that in the calculator, I get 0 0.363636, 36, and it keeps going forever and ever. So that is a repeating decimal, which is, we can put with that little bar on top of it. So those are rational numbers because they can be written as a fraction. So... If something can't be written as a fraction, like over here you see your irrational numbers. We know like pi, we can't turn pi into a fraction, square root of 2. Um, those are numbers we can't turn into a either a terminating or repeating decimal, so therefore they're irrational. Rational, we can write all of these are can be written as fractions. Those are rational numbers. Integers, we've covered that before. It's a positive or negative whole number. Um, whole numbers are just the positive integers and zero, and then natural numbers are your counting numbers, like one, two, three, four, and so on. So that's kind of a review of real numbers. So the first example, so this is now getting into intervals of real numbers. So we have negative three is less than or equal to x is less than five. So we have our real number line we're going to put something at negative 3 and at 5. So we've done this before using dots, open and close dots, which you can still do. So this, because this has the or equal to, it's going to be a closed dot. So we're going to color it in. And then 5 would be an open dot, and we would shade in between. The way you're going to see your book doing it, is the same idea, but it's going to just use the brackets that you've also learned before. So if we go over here and put this into interval notation, we know it will be square brackets around the negative 3, because it can be negative 3, and then curved brackets around the 5, because we know it can't be 5. So the way that we turn that into the number line is you just put your brackets on the number line. So square brackets around the 3, curved parentheses around the 5, and shade in between. So you're going to see things written as the second example, so it's important to understand how those open and closed dots translate to the brackets. Okay, so then we have, this got cut off a little bit, let's see if I can move that, nope, okay. <laughs> um, Nope. Nope. Okay. So um, these are just examples of bounded intervals and unbounded intervals. So we did an example like this on the previous slide. Unbounded, remember, is going to have an either positive infinity or negative infinity. And then we remember we always use a curved bracket parenthesis with the infinity symbol because we can't actually it can't actually be infinity. Infinity is not a number. Um, and then so, and then we want to use either a square bracket or a curved bracket for the number that is the one bound that we have. Okay? Okay, 
So next topic is distributive property. Um, for some reason, this book puts the number after the parentheses, and I'm not sure why they do that, but we could rewrite it. If you hate that, rewrite it as x times x plus 3y, just like that. So those mean the same thing, because remember, we can 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3, so we can rearrange that when we're multiplying. So distributive property means we're going to multiply everything by that x. So x times x is x squared x times 3y is 3xy. So that's how we do distributive property. Now, factored form is opposite. So you're taking out things that they both have in common. So if you look at the 4 and the 20, we have to think what numbers go into both 4 and 20. So what are factors of those? Well, we know 4 goes into 20, so we can actually take out a 4. Okay, and then z's. We have two z's on the first term and one z on the second term. So we can't take out, we can't factor out more z's than we have. So we're going to pull out one z on the outside. So that means that the first term would have one z left over. And then it'd be plus, we have to say four times what gives us 20, and that would be five. And a good way to check that you did this right is just multiply it back out. So that'd be four z squared plus 20 z. So you can double check your work. Okay, properties of exponents. Um, it's kind of in the video, these got cut off, but you can see them in my notes that I've attached as well. So these are all things that we did last year um, and in Algebra 1. So it's just reminding you, like when you are multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. When you're dividing like bases, you subtract the exponents. So um, it's simplifying those um, using those properties of exponents. So for example 7, we have a couple different ways we could do this. You can see that we have um, u, I have a u on the top and the bottom of the fraction, so that means that I can subtract, or I can move, so we know that if we have a negative exponent, we have to move it to the opposite location to make it positive. So I'm going to do that to start with. So u squared is positive, so I can keep it there. But the v to the negative third power right there, I'm going to put that on the bottom to make it positive. So now I have that. Okay, this u to the negative 1, I'm going to move to the top and turn it to a positive exponent. And then v squared is still on the bottom because it's already positive. So then we have multiplication going on, so we can just add the exponents. So this would be u to the third power over v to the fifth power. So there's our answer. Okay, so then the last thing is converting to scientific notation. I don't know about you, but it's been probably a long time since you've done that. Um, real quick, it's you can kind of use the exponent in scientific notation to tell you how many times you're moving the decimal place. So I'm going to switch colors here so you can see. Okay, so with scientific notation, your number needs to be between 1 and 10. So I, if I look here, I have 3, 4, 5. So I want to make that 3.45. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces that I move the decimal. So this would be 3.45 times 10 to the negative fifth power. The reason that it's a negative exponent is this number is smaller than 1. It's not a bigger number. Positive exponents with scientific notation mean it's going to be bigger than 1. This is going to be smaller, so we want it to be a negative exponent. Okay? So then this one, we're going to do the opposite. So I'm going to write out 1.23, and then it's times 10 to the 5th. So I know I need to move it 5 spaces. And I know I want to make the number bigger, not smaller, so I'm going to move it to the right. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have to fill in 1, 2, 3 zeros. So this would be 123,000. Okay, so that is it for section point one.